Hey friends, I'm Amy, a health coach here at Flip Your Leaf, and today we're doing part two of IBS management tools and strategies that have nothing to do with the low FODMAP diet. Now, I know you've heard some of these before, but please stick around till the end because I bet I have one that's going to surprise you. So first, let's just get it over with. We have sleep. So sleep is so important for our bodies. Like we're not even 100% sure why we do it yet, but every time we learn something new, we just learn that it is mission critical to the functioning of our bodies. And yes, that includes our digestive system. So like we could go over the circadian rhythm and blood sugar and all of those weird things. But the take home message here is if you are not getting high quality sleep, your body, your gut, your brain, your mental health is going to suffer. And so because IBS, you know, it's in your guts, we all talk about your digestive tract, it's in your whole body. Right? And so when you're not sleeping right, and that's not even necessarily the right number of hours, if you're not getting the right amount of hours of rest for your body, right? Like not even just being unconscious, like you need to be resting, right? If you're not getting the right number of hours of rest for your body, you are not going to be functioning properly. You're not going to be the best version of yourself, the person, you know, your body is not going to have the strength that it would normally have. Your body's not going to be able to function in the way that it's meant to function. You know, but it will not be at peak performance ever. And you know, this can do things like muck up our blood sugar. It can give us weird cravings. It can make us really temperamental if you're anything like me. It involves a lot of crying over bagels. Like it gets weird. Like, and then our whole digestive process is, you know, we're getting hungry or we're not hungry or, you know, our guts are kind of thrown off. If you have constipation, it's, you know, tons of my clients are like, oh, I didn't sleep last night. And just, I'm not expecting anything to happen today because every time my sleep is off, my gut is off. And that is something that I hear so often. We see it in research. Like, it's just so tied to our bodies, right? IBS lives in you as a whole person. And if we're going to tackle your IBS, we have to tackle your whole body. And so sleep is so important to just our day to day functioning that that is something that we need to master even before we throw you into something like the low FODMAP diet. Because like when we talk about the low FODMAP diet in particular, if you're not doing the low FODMAP diet, just tune me out. Um, but if that's something that is sort of upcoming for you, something that you're here to learn more about when we're testing FODMAP, you know, each FODMAP has its own little FODMAP bucket, right? And we're challenging to see, is that bucket really big? We can fit a lot of FODMAPs in it, or is that bucket very small? And we have to be, um, you know, conscious or intentional about which foods we're putting in those buckets. One thing we don't always talk about is that FODMAPs aren't the only thing that go in those buckets. Sleep is one of the things that can sort of fill up space in that bucket for you. And so if your sleep is off, you're not getting that rest, um, you might be throwing off some of your tests. So that's one of the things that I look for and people who are responding to all five FODMAP groups is what else is in those buckets? Sometimes it's your sleep. And so if your sleep is feeling really off, like talk to your healthcare team about it, you know, that might look like um, even taking medications to make sure that you're getting enough sleep so that your body can rest. Like you have a chronic medical condition, right? Rest is really important for our bodies to heal. If they're feeling irritated, if they're not feeling well, like we need rest in order to recover. Um, there are some medical conditions that prevent us from sleeping, like sleep apnea, which can be, um, you know, there are ways to manage those to make them more functional for your body. Um, things like psychotherapy, if your stress is, you know, preventing you from sleeping, if there are things going on in your life um, that you might need support with, like addressing our sleep, like I said, is mission critical. And I know you've heard that before, um, but it's always worth repeating. So along with sweep, sleep, we talked about this a little bit before, comes rest. So in addition to sleeping, being unconscious, having those dreams, how are you resting in your life? Like I know at least here in Toronto, everything is just go, go, go all the time. And like, I feel it in my brain, I feel it in my bones and I feel it in my gut. Um, and so sometimes just taking a day off to be like, you know what? don't knock on my door, I'm not here, um, is exactly what the doctor ordered. So, you know, how are you sleeping and how are you resting when you're awake? And I don't mean like bubble bath self-care, like I hate self-care, like I have a whole, I have a whole email about that in my newsletter. <laughs> don't, don't get me started on self-care, um, that's not right for me. Um, what I'm talking about is what lets your body sort of feel calm, feel safe, feel, you know, at rest, you know, how do you unravel and just be for a minute? So first two tips are sleep and rest. Our second, um, sorry, our third tip 
is play. So see, we're going with a bit of a theme here. So like, how are you sleeping? And you know, how are you, how are you finding that space where your body can just do what it needs to do without you around? How are you resting so that you can still be present, but still be doing, you know, restorative things, things that help restore your body next. How do you play? right? You are locked into so many things to manage your gut symptoms, to sort of keep your body feeling whole, feeling right, you know, clinging to any sort of normalcy that you can find. How are you playing? How are you sort of letting go of all of those things that you need to remember? You know, all of those sort of flaming hoops you have to jump through to find your health. Where are you playing? Where are you just sort of, like I said, letting go, unraveling, and just letting yourself be for a minute? Are you reading? Are you dancing? Are you gardening? Are you going for long walks? Are you petting your dog? Are you being silly? Are you writing? Are you creating? Where is that play in your life? Is that something that you are nourishing? And it is so important and we don't talk about it enough. I know that there are really important things happening for you right now. That's probably one of the reasons that you're watching this video. We don't talk about play enough for how it heals our bodies, how it heals our minds, how it helps restore us to whole human beings. Like I have heard person after person after person in my practice say, I just want to feel normal. I just want to feel whole. And often one of the things that's missing, you know, along with, you know, I want regular bowel movements and I want to just be able to eat what I want is this, I want to be spontaneous and I want to have fun and I want to play. And that is part of what makes me a whole person. And so I would invite you to have this as one of the tools that you're putting in your toolbox is really being conscious of how am I making time to play, to be silly, to have fun, to sort of break the rules. And, you know, if you're following a structured diet already, if you're following the low FODMAP diet, how do I get to rebel? Like there are so many rules that I have to follow. There are so many things that I have to do. Where am I able to break free of all of that and just to exist and have fun for one moment? So our first three ideas are to sleep, are to rest, are to play, and then our last idea for today is to move. And this can be any kind of moving that you want. Like we talk about exercise, you know, I'm not here to tell you about your heart health. That is not what I do in this space. I'm saying move your body. So in an IBS context, we would look for things that are like twisting and bending because those are gently massaging your gut muscles. Um, if you want to get into things that are like yoga or gentle walking or even gentle running, like we want sort of low impact things if you're just getting started in this space. Uh, because like I said, they can reduce stress, they can help you sleep, they can even become a type of play, they can become a meditation if, you know, they start feeling really easy for you, just letting you sink into your body and really connect with yourself in that space. Um, and so, yeah, and then if you want to do something, like I, I run marathons, I do HIIT training, I, you know, was getting into CrossFit before everything sort of shut down. Like you can do whatever you want with your body as long as you're willing to put in the time um, to sort of learn your body's cues, learn what your body is capable of and how to make that accessible to yourself. So those are our four ideas for today. We have sleep, rest, play, and movement. And those are four additional tools that you can put in your IBS toolbox. If you want to learn more about IBS, about the low FODMAP diet, about, you know, tips and tricks to really make your body feel like home, make sure you're jumping in my free newsletter. I'm going to drop the link below. Um, we have a blast in there. You get an invite to my Facebook community. You get tons of extra information that you're not going to find on my website or anywhere else. I mean, we just have so much fun. So I'm going to drop the link below. Make sure you hop in there. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video.